Hey there, welcome to day 1742 of What's Up To Now. Sharon Horn Nelson here with my Halloween pumpkins and my little gourds we grew in the garden. My, my granddaughter actually bopped my sister on the head with this one. She's only one and a half, so she gets away with it, but uh, it's funny. And my other sister got us this one for my daughter and her granddaughter, or her daughter, because it's cute as the Dickens, right? And we didn't have to carve it. Got them at Menards, I think. They just glue some fuzz on their head and paint a funny face. They probably just stencil a funny face. I don't know. Anyway, they're cute. Halloween used to be my favorite holiday or one of my favorite holidays. Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas, this time of year, I absolutely love, as do many people, right? You either love it or you hate it. And there's a whole lot of people in the middle. Everybody says there's nothing in the middle, but there's a whole lot of people that are kind of plus or minus on the holiday, depending on what's going on outside of them, which is the absolute wrong way to look at things, right? Wrong or right, wrong or right. Um, if it doesn't feel good to us, then it's not the right way to look at it for us. It might be the right way for other people, but it's not for us. So today, being that it's Halloween, Halloween 2022, uh, I thought we'd talk about fear today. Fear in the BU 365 Day Challenge. And we talked about, and I was sharing, what's our biggest fear right now? And we're going back and we're thinking about different ages we were at when we felt different types of fear. And we're asking ourselves, do, am I still afraid of that thing? Do I still actually fear that thing? And if we do, guess what? We're going to start to eliminate those fears and take action toward them because fear is really the greatest motivator for us. It, it signals to us. It's just like any other emotion. It's a signal to us that we need to do something. We need to take action. If we're afraid of something, we need to figure out why we're afraid of that, what we can do about it, and then start taking action to overcome that fear. Now, there's some fears in our life that we'll never address, uh, and that's as it should be. I am afraid of going into certain areas where I might be killed, right? So I'm not going to travel to dangerous countries. I'm not going to go to dangerous neighborhoods because I, I have a healthy fear of not wanting to get killed in a violent way. So... <laughs> I think that's a pretty healthy fear. I don't think any of us want to die in a violent way. Now, interestingly enough, I am absolutely positively not afraid of actually dying, leaving the planet, leaving this life, leaving this body. Uh, and that's, that's because I have actually had a death experience. I overcame that death experience. I experienced it. And so now, and even before then, I wasn't really afraid of dying and I wondered why. But now I know 100% for sure why I am personally not afraid of dying. It's one of the most common things that people are afraid of. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I have a little bit of a cold. COVID cold, I don't know, but I've gotten my, my granddaughter and my daughter sick now too. My daughter's pregnant with my third granddaughter, so I feel a little bit guilty. I don't know how I even caught it or got it first because I'm not around very many people, but apparently germs can get us wherever we are, right? So all the protection and all the things we think we're doing aren't necessarily 100% effective. But let's talk about fears. Fear. <clears throat> and one of my friends did a, a video yesterday, I think, about the COVID pandemic and fear and how we're so afraid that we're going to all get COVID. And I will say, as much as I try to stealth myself against things like that, what's one of the first things I think every day since we've all been brainwashed to believe we're all going to get COVID and die uh, one of the first things I think when I wake up sniffly or stuffy is, oh my God, do I have COVID? My daughter made me go get it. My sister brought over tests so I could test and it came back negative. But then it's all about, well, the home tests are unreliable. Maybe you should go get a test. And I'm like, I'm not going to get in a test. So maybe I should have since my daughter and my granddaughter are sick. But I'm not going to live in fear. I choose not to live in fear of a virus that, number one, I'm pretty convinced I had in the very beginning of it, and I had a super bad version of it, and am still here today to talk about it. And number two, every cold, every sniffle, every runny nose, now that runny nose has been added to the symptom list for all categories of people, vaccinated, unvaccinated, boosted, unboosted, runny nose, which we all were told for how long, it wasn't a symptom of COVID, which always gave me, you know, solace and, okay, I just have a cold, or I just have allergies because my nose is runny. Now, just about anything that you would see or, or experience with a common cold or flu is being called COVID. So what the heck even is COVID? That, that's, that's something I'm deciding and choosing to let the fear go around it. And I am not going to live my life based on other people's fear. 
we get enough, we're scared of enough stuff on our own. It's interesting. We're not born with any fears except of loud noises and of falling. And every other fear we learn through our experiences. And I have learned, like everybody else, a whole plethora of them. And it's, it's letting them go one at a time. And our exercise for the annual challenge, I think it's a good one. We're looking at our fears and asking ourselves, do we still have them? And if we don't, what did we do to overcome them? What was our process? And I guarantee it will 100% always involve deciding you were going to overcome it and take action toward overcoming it, usually moving us into the fear. If I'm afraid of public speaking, I don't recommend if you're afraid of dying, don't go die. That's not the best way to experiment with this. Try something small. If you're afraid of eating a particular food, try eating that food. And unless you're allergic to it, please don't eat it if you're allergic to it. You should be afraid of things we're allergic to because they could kill us, right? That's that's what our 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 reptilian brain reptilian brain is all about is keeping us safe. You know, if a bear's chasing us, oftentimes we should run away, or a tiger, or whatever you could think of, some predator. We should often evade and get away fast, right? That's what our whole fear mechanism has been designed for. Yet the days of being eaten by saber toothed tigers and bears and other physical predators are long gone for the vast majority of us on the planet. So our brains decided to make up different things for us to be afraid of. How many of us are afraid of not being good enough? How many of us have ever experienced comparing ourselves to others and thinking we just don't measure up? How many of us have been afraid of trying something new, doing something new, picking up a new sport or hobby because we might look foolish or embarrassed? Almost everybody at some time in our life has felt that way. And depending on how you were treated when you stepped out of that comfort zone will determine whether you're willing to step out of the comfort zone again or not. If we step out of our comfort zone and things work out well, we're more willing to do it again than if we step out of our comfort zone and we feel like every time we try something new or step out of our comfort zone, we get knocked down, slapped in the face and, and just bowled over. We're less likely to stand up and say, thank you very much. Give me another, right? If somebody punches us in, a fa in the face are we going to try to avoid that person next time? Or are we going to go let them punch us in the face every day? You know, think of bullying and, and things like that. So what are some of the biggest fears? And I guess I challenge you to think about the things you're afraid of today. And uh, ask yourself, maybe, how long have I been afraid of this? Or is it something new? I have new fears popping up all the time. And things that I thought I would absolutely positively never be afraid of in my life when I was younger. Now I find myself actually niggling and being slightly fearful of those things. And I'll tell you what, when I notice them, I'm going to start leaning into and stepping into them starting today because I realize they are my biggest triggers, my biggest motivators, the biggest signs showing me what I need to work on, where I need to go, what I need to stretch and how I need to be to show up in the world the way I want to show up. Our idiom for today and I actually read about 20 different idioms about fear and fright and and um, being afraid many of which we've already covered in the supersize your business for female entrepreneurs group we've already covered them and talked about where they come from what do they mean and how can you apply them to your business and today's the one I picked was scare the living daylights out of me or you uh, because why it's I've had a lot of experience with that one I've been scared a lot because um, I grew up in a family where some of my sisters like to play practical jokes and prank us also thought that when we were growing up, we lived in a house that was haunted. I don't know that it was haunted. It was an old house with radiator heat, and so it made a lot of funky sounds. But we as little girls believed it was haunted. I don't know that we ever saw ghosts, but I did make one up when I was a teenager to keep my sisters out of my bedroom. I, I made up an imaginary friend named George, the sea captain who lived in my closet, because my sisters, had, we'd lived in the house since we were little girls, and we, you know, a lot of us believed that there were ghosts there or spirits there. Uh, and so it was easy to convince them that I had a ghost sitting in my closet, which, which makes me laugh now, right? I mean, really, really sisters? My sisters are really smart, but it was funny when we were kids. All right. So then I shared like 20 different idioms. Have a happy Halloween. Go out, celebrate however it is you celebrate. I'm going to be a big pumpkin today. Not the great pumpkin, just a big pumpkin. And, uh, probably hand out some trick or treats, hoping my granddaughter will come by for a nice trick or treat. If I can help you anyway, ask. Otherwise, have an awesome day. I am finally, I'm traveling in a week, so I figured I'd better start getting ready today for a big, long trip. But if I can help you, ask. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow.